There is absolutely no doubt that there is a problem with contaminated supplements. The reality is that all athletes, whether amateur or professional, will be taking supplements. And those athletes will expose themselves to risks. Well, the issue is that athletes really face a problem. Uh, supplements can be contaminated and you just cannot tell from the outside uh, if that's the case or not. I think athletes have a right to use supplements um, as anyone in society. Uh, supplements are a part of society. And there's also a fundamental issue here that we ask from athletes to perform to the best uh, of their abilities. The problem, the negative, is that the athletes themselves really need security because they don't know where to turn to when it comes to taking supplements. They are afraid that if they take a product that it contains a banned substance and that could have disastrous effects on their careers. There's always a concern. Um, it's something that we're aware of in our programme, the coaches are aware of. It's just a matter of minimising risk. When I'm competing I don't buy supplements abroad if I run out. Um, I'd rather do without my supplements than, than take the risk of buying something abroad and not being aware of, what, of what's in it. We cannot bury our heads uh, in the sand about uh, sports supplements to say that you know, it's just strict liability and don't take it. Uh, it is out there, it's in the market. Um, athletes, parents, uh, the sporting public are asking questions. We want to take this, does it work, is it safe? There's certain individuals that would take a very hard line approach and, uh, and insist that athletes uh, don't take supplementation, don't uh, consume any supplements at all. That's not necessarily a pragmatic approach in terms of the fact that athletes will look for performance advantages and will uh, um, use supplements going forward. Clearly there is a problem with supplements which are contaminated but also there is a solution. Athletes are now in a position whereby they can make an informed choice to manage the risk involved with supplements. We're not talking here about the products which are deliberately spiked with prohibited substances. We're talking here about those supplements products which are inadvertently contaminated and this contamination has uh, a number of sources whether it is through raw materials whether it's through cross-contamination when the manufacturer is producing one of those spike substances. Contamination is a real issue that uh, obviously with the latest uh, batch of European testing showing a, a 1 in 10 risk for random supplements uh, selected uh, from the industry, um, that's a, a very significant risk. Let me explain to you the issue of cross-contamination. Manufacturing of supplements is commonly subcontracted to third-party manufacturers. And these third-party manufacturers make a wide range of products for a wide range of brands. Whilst brand B may be respectable, with the intention to be free of banned substances, traces of brand A may carry over if it was manufactured just before brand B and manufactured using the same equipment. Now this is obviously bad news if brand A contained banned substances. The other source of contamination is the raw materials that the manufacturers use. Clearly if a manufacturer is purchasing low cost raw materials, their product is going to be of a poor quality and as a result it, there is a greater risk of contamination. I think as a major retailer we see a responsibility on our shoulders to make sure that the customer, our consumer, gets um, what A is on the label in the product and that the product is, um, doesn't have anything con any contamination. As an industry, the sports nutrition industry needs to come together to ensure that we have quality assurance in place, whether it's through kite marking, whether it's through educational processes, to go back to the athletes and the people that support the athletes, the coaches, the strength and conditioning experts and so on, to say these are the products that you can take where the risk is minimised. We've done another survey purchasing products, popular products, popular brands from around uh, European countries, so products that are available widely in Europe, um, and again conducted uh, testing of those products and found again 10% of those products are contaminated with either anabolic steroids or stimulants or in some cases both. And up to now we haven't really had the, the, uh, the, the know-how or the facility to be able to check these things and make sure that and um, we welcome any opportunities that are coming our way to be able to make sure that we do give um, peace of mind to our customers when they can buy products here. And at the end of the day, we're trying to make these sporting greats or prominent these sporting greats that are emerging aware of the fact that they are responsible for what they take. It's not their coaches, it's nobody else. They need to know what is in the product before they take it. So if they are banned, it is basically their problem and not their coaches or the people down the line. 
they must look at themselves. And that's what we're trying to teach the youngsters at school. If we can bring that breed through, we're going to really do something big for sport in the years to come. Supplement companies and manufacturers have to work closely with these independent laboratories. These laboratories can provide expert advice on the sourcing of raw materials and on the manufacturing processes to avoid cross-contamination. It's all about controlling the risk. It's all about clean sport.